Clinton Richard Dawkins, born the 26th of March 1941, is an English ethologist, evolutionary biologist, and author. He is an emeritus fellow of New College, Oxford, and was the University of Oxford's professor for public understanding of science from 1995 until 2008. Dawkins first came to prominence with his 1976 book The Selfish Gene, which popularized the gene-centered view of evolution and introduced the term meme. With his book The Extended Phenotype 1982, he introduced into evolutionary biology the influential concept that the phenotypic effects of a gene are not necessarily limited to an organism's body, but can stretch far into the environment. In 2006, he founded the Richard Dawkins Foundation for Reason and Science. Dawkins is known as an outspoken atheist. He has claimed in interviews to be an agnostic about many matters of religious faith, instead endorsing reason. He is well known for his criticism of creationism and intelligent design. In The Blind Watchmaker 1986, he argues against the watchmaker analogy, an argument for the existence of a supernatural creator based upon the complexity of living organisms. Instead, he describes evolutionary processes as analogous to a blind watchmaker, in that reproduction, mutation, and selection are unguided by any designer. In The God Delusion 2006, Dawkins contends that a supernatural creator almost certainly does not exist and that religious faith is a delusion. Dawkins has been awarded many prestigious academic and writing awards, and he makes regular television, radio, and internet appearances, predominantly discussing his books, his atheism, and his ideas and opinions as a public intellectual. Topic. Background topic. Early life Dawkins was born in Nairobi, then in British Kenya, on 26 March 1941. He is the son of Jean Mary Vivian born 1916 and Clinton John Dawkins who was an agricultural civil servant in the British Colonial Service in Nyasaland present-day Malawi. His father was called up into the King's African Rifles during World War II and returned to England in 1949, when Dawkins was eight. His father had inherited a country estate, over Norton Park in Oxfordshire, which he farmed commercially. Dawkins considers himself English and lives in Oxford, England. Dawkins has a younger sister, both his parents were interested in natural sciences, and they answered Dawkins's questions in scientific terms. Dawkins describes his childhood as a normal Anglican upbringing. He embraced Christianity until halfway through his teenage years, at which point he concluded that the theory of evolution was a better explanation for life's complexity, and ceased believing in a god. Dawkins states, The main residual reason why I was religious was from being so impressed with the complexity of life and feeling that it had to have a designer, and I think it was when I realized that Darwinism was a far superior explanation that pulled the rug out from under the argument of design and that left me with nothing. Topic. Education From 1954 to 1959 Dawkins attended Oundle School in Northamptonshire, an English public school with a distinct Church of England flavour, where he was in Londomer House. While at Oundle, Dawkins read Bertrand Russell's Why I Am Not a Christian for the first time. He studied zoology at Balliol College, Oxford, graduating in 1962. While there, he was tutored by Nobel Prize winning ethologist Nicholas Tinbergen. He continued as a research student under Tinbergen's supervision, receiving his MA and Doctor of Philosophy degrees by 1966, and remained a research assistant for another year. Tinbergen was a pioneer in the study of animal behavior, particularly in the areas of instinct, learning, and choice. Dawkins's research in this period concerned models of animal decision making. Topic: Teaching. From 1967 to 1969, he was an assistant professor of zoology at the University of California, Berkeley. During this period, the students and faculty at UC Berkeley were largely opposed to the ongoing Vietnam War, and Dawkins became involved in the anti-war demonstrations and activities. He returned to the University of Oxford in 1970 as a lecturer. In 1990, he became a reader in zoology. In 1995, he was appointed Simon Yee Professor for the Public Understanding of Science at Oxford, a position that had been endowed by Charles Simon Yee with the express intention that the holder 
be expected to make important contributions to the public understanding of some scientific field, and that its first holder should be Richard Dawkins. He held that professorship from 1995 until 2008. Since 1970, he has been a Fellow of New College, Oxford, and he is now an Emeritus Fellow. He has delivered many lectures, including the Henry Sidgwick Memorial Lecture 1989, the first Erasmus Darwin Memorial Lecture 1990, the Michael Faraday Lecture 1991, the T. H. Huxley Memorial Lecture 1992, the Irvine Memorial Lecture 1997, the Sheldon Doyle Lecture 1999, the Tinbergen Lecture 2004, and the Tanner Lectures 2003. In 1991, he gave the Royal Institution Christmas Lectures for Children on Growing Up in the Universe. He also has edited several journals, and has acted as editorial advisor to the Encarta Encyclopedia and the Encyclopedia of Evolution. He is listed as a senior editor and a columnist of the Council for Secular Humanism's Free Inquiry magazine, and has been a member of the editorial board of Skeptic magazine since its foundation. Dawkins has sat on judging panels for awards as diverse as the Royal Society's Faraday Award and the British Academy Television Awards, and has been president of the Biological Sciences section of the British Association for the Advancement of Science. In 2004, Balliol College, Oxford, instituted the Dawkins Prize, awarded for outstanding research into the ecology and behavior of animals whose welfare and survival may be endangered by human activities." In September 2008, he retired from his professorship, announcing plans to "...write a book aimed at youngsters in which he will warn them against believing in anti-scientific fairy tales." In 2011, Dawkins joined the professoriate of the New College of the Humanities, a new private university in London, established by A.C. Grayling, which opened in September 2012. Work Evolutionary biology Dawkins is best known for his popularization of the gene as the principal unit of selection in evolution. This view is most clearly set out in his books. The Selfish Gene, 1976, in which he notes that, all life evolves by the differential survival of replicating entities. The Extended Phenotype, 1982, in which he describes natural selection as, the process whereby replicators out propagate each other. He introduces to a wider audience the influential concept he presented in 1977, that the phenotypic effects of a gene are not necessarily limited to an organism's body, but can stretch far into the environment, including the bodies of other organisms. Dawkins regarded the extended phenotype as his single most important contribution to evolutionary biology and he considered niche construction to be a special case of extended phenotype. The concept of extended phenotype helps explain evolution, but it does not help predict specific outcomes. Dawkins has consistently been skeptical about non-adaptive processes in evolution such as spandrels, described by Gould and Lewontin and about selection at levels above that of the gene. He is particularly skeptical about the practical possibility or importance of group selection as a basis for understanding altruism. This behavior appears at first to be an evolutionary paradox, since helping others costs precious resources and decreases one's own fitness. Previously, many had interpreted this as an aspect of group selection, individuals are doing what is best for the survival of the population or species as a whole. British evolutionary biologist W. D. Hamilton used gene frequency analysis in his inclusive fitness theory to show how hereditary altruistic traits can evolve if there is sufficient genetic similarity between actors and recipients of such altruism including close relatives. Hamilton's inclusive fitness has since been successfully applied to a wide range of organisms, including humans. Similarly, Robert Trivers, thinking in terms of the gene-centered model, developed the theory of reciprocal altruism, whereby one organism provides a benefit to another in the expectation of future reciprocation. Dawkins popularized these ideas in the selfish gene, and developed them in his own work. In June 2012, Dawkins was highly critical of fellow biologist E. O. Wilson's 2012 book The Social Conquest of Earth as misunderstanding Hamilton's theory of kin selection. Dawkins has also been strongly critical of the Gaia hypothesis of the independent scientist James Lovelock. Critics of Dawkins's biological approach suggest that taking the gene as the unit of selection, a single event in which an individual either succeeds or fails to reproduce, is misleading. 
The gene could be better described, they say, as a unit of evolution the long-term changes in allele frequencies in a population. In The Selfish Gene, Dawkins explains that he is using George C. Williams's definition of the gene as that which segregates and recombines with appreciable frequency. Another common objection is that a gene cannot survive alone, but must cooperate with other genes to build an individual, and therefore a gene cannot be an independent unit. In the extended phenotype, Dawkins suggests that from an individual gene's viewpoint, all other genes are part of the environment to which it is adapted. Advocates for higher levels of selection such as Richard Lewontin, David Sloan Wilson, and Elliot Sober suggest that there are many phenomena including altruism that gene-based selection cannot satisfactorily explain. The philosopher Mary Midgley, with whom Dawkins clashed in print concerning the selfish gene, has criticized gene selection, memetics, and sociobiology as being excessively reductionist. She has suggested that the popularity of Dawkins's work is due to factors in the zeitgeist, such as the increased individualism of the Thatcher Reagan decades, in a set of controversies over the mechanisms and interpretation of evolution, what has been called the Darwin Wars. One faction is often named after Dawkins, while the other faction is named after the American pale paleontologist Stephen J. Gould, reflecting the pre-eminence of each as a popularizer of the pertinent ideas. In particular, Dawkins and Gould have been prominent commentators in the controversy over sociobiology and evolutionary psychology, with Dawkins generally approving and Gould generally being critical. A typical example of Dawkins's position is his scathing review of Not in Our Genes by Stephen Rose, Leon J. Kamin, and Richard C. Lewontin. Two other thinkers who are often considered to be allied with Dawkins on the subject are Steven Pinker and Daniel Dennett. Dennett has promoted a gene-centered view of evolution and defended reductionism in biology. Despite their academic disagreements, Dawkins and Gould did not have a hostile personal relationship, and Dawkins dedicated a large portion of his 2003 book A Devil's Chaplain posthumously to Gould, who had died the previous year. When asked if Darwinism informs his everyday apprehension of life, Dawkins says, In one way it does. My eyes are constantly wide open to the extraordinary fact of existence. Not just human existence but the existence of life and how this breathtakingly powerful process, which is natural selection, has managed to take the very simple facts of physics and chemistry and build them up to redwood trees and humans. That's never far from my thoughts, that sense of amazement. On the other hand I certainly don't allow Darwinism to influence my feelings about human social life." Implying that he feels that individual human beings can opt out of the survival machine of Darwinism since they are freed by the consciousness of self. Topic. Fathering the meme In his book The Selfish Gene, Dawkins coined the word meme the behavioral equivalent of a gene as a way to encourage readers to think about how Darwinian principles might be extended beyond the realm of genes. It was intended as an extension of his replicators argument, but it took on a life of its own in the hands of other authors, such as Daniel Dennett and Susan Blackmore. These popularizations then led to the emergence of memetics, a field from which Dawkins has distanced himself. Dawkins's meme refers to any cultural entity that an observer might consider a replicator of a certain idea or set of ideas. He hypothesized that people could view many cultural entities as capable of such replication, generally through communication and contact with humans, who have evolved as efficient although not perfect copiers of information and behavior. Because memes are not always copied perfectly, they might become refined, combined, or otherwise modified with other ideas. This results in new memes, which may themselves prove more or less efficient replicators than their predecessors, thus providing a framework for a hypothesis of cultural evolution based on memes, a notion that is analogous to the theory of biological evolution based on genes. Although Dawkins invented the term meme, he has not claimed that the idea was entirely novel, and there have been other expressions for similar ideas in the past. For instance, John Laurent has suggested that the term may have derived from the work of the little-known German biologist Richard Semon. Semon regarded Neme as the collective set of neural memory traces conscious or subconscious that were inherited, although such view would be considered as Lamarckian by modern biologists. Laurent also found the use of the term Neme in Maurice Maeterlinck's The Life of the White Ant 1926, and Maeterlinck himself stated that he obtained the phrase from Semon's work. In his own work, Maeterlinck tried to explain memory in termites and ants by claiming that neural memory traces were added. 
upon the individual name. Nonetheless, James Gleick describes Dawkins's concept of the meme as his most famous memorable invention, far more influential than his selfish genes or his later proselytizing against religiosity. Topic: <laughs> Foundation. In 2006, Dawkins founded the Richard Dawkins Foundation for Reason and Science (RDFRS), a non-profit organization. RDFRS financed research on the psychology of belief and religion, financed scientific education programs and materials, and publicized and supported charitable organizations that are secular in nature. In January 2016, it was announced that the foundation was merging with the Center for Inquiry, with Dawkins becoming a member of the new organization's board of directors. Topic. Criticism of religion Dawkins was confirmed into the Church of England at the age of 13, but began to grow skeptical of the beliefs. After learning about Darwinism and the scientific reason why living things look as though they have been designed, Dawkins lost the remainder of his religious faith. He said that his understanding of science and evolutionary processes led him to question how adults in positions of leadership in a civilized world could still be so uneducated in biology, and is puzzled by how belief in God could remain among individuals who are sophisticated in science. Dawkins notes that some physicists use God as a metaphor for the general awe-inspiring mysteries of the universe, which causes confusion and misunderstanding among people who incorrectly think they are talking about a mystical being who forgives sins, transubstantiates wine, or makes people live after they die. He disagrees with Stephen J. Gold's principle of non-overlapping magisteria noma and suggests that the existence of God should be treated as a scientific hypothesis like any other. Dawkins became a prominent critic of religion and has stated his opposition to religion as twofold, religion is both a source of conflict and a justification for belief without evidence. He considers faith—belief that is not based on evidence—as one of the world's great evils. On his spectrum of theistic probability, which has seven levels between 1 100% certainty that a god or gods exist and 7 100% certainty that a god or gods do not exist, Dawkins has said he is a 6.9, which represents a de facto atheist, who thinks, I cannot know for certain but I think God is very improbable, and I live my life on the assumption that he is not there. When asked about his slight uncertainty, Dawkins quips. I am agnostic to the extent that I am agnostic about fairies at the bottom of the garden." In May 2014, at the Hay Festival in Wales, Dawkins explained that while he does not believe in the supernatural elements of the Christian faith, he still has nostalgia for the ceremonial side of religion. In addition to beliefs in deities, Dawkins has criticized other irrational religious beliefs such as Jesus turned water into wine, that an embryo starts as a blob, that magic underwear will protect you, that Jesus was resurrected, that semen comes from the spine, that Jesus walked on water, that the sun sets in a marsh, that the Garden of Eden existed in Missouri, that Jesus' mother was a virgin, that Muhammad split the moon, and that Lazarus was raised from the dead. Dawkins has risen to prominence in public debates concerning science and religion since the publication of his most popular book, The God Delusion, in 2006, which became an international bestseller. As of 2015, more than 3 million copies have been sold and the book has been translated into over 30 languages. Its success has been seen by many as indicative of a change in the contemporary cultural zeitgeist and has also been identified with the rise of new atheism. In the book, Dawkins contends that a supernatural creator almost certainly does not exist and that religious faith is a delusion. A fixed false belief. In his February 2002 TED Talk entitled, Militant Atheism, Dawkins urged all atheists to openly state their position and to fight the incursion of the Church into politics and science. On 30 September 2007, Dawkins, Christopher Hitchens, Sam Harris, and Daniel Dennett met at Hitchens's residence for a private, unmoderated discussion that lasted two hours. The event was videotaped and entitled, The Four Horsemen. Dawkins sees education and consciousness raising as the primary tools in opposing what he considers to be religious dogma and indoctrination. These tools include the fight against certain stereotypes, and he has adopted the term bright as a way of associating positive public connotations with those who possess a naturalistic worldview. He has given support to the idea of a free-thinking school, which would not indoctrinate children, 
but would instead teach children to ask for evidence, be skeptical, critical, and open-minded. Such a school, says Dawkins, should teach comparative religion, and teach it properly without any bias towards particular religions, and including historically important but dead religions, such as those of ancient Greece and the Norse gods, if only because these, like the Abrahamic scriptures, are important for understanding English literature and European history. Inspired by the consciousness-raising successes of feminists in arousing widespread embarrassment at the routine use of he, instead of she. Dawkins similarly suggests that phrases such as Catholic child and Muslim child should be considered as socially absurd as, for instance, Marxist child, as he believes that children should not be classified based on the ideological or religious beliefs of their parents. While some critics, such as writer Christopher Hitchens, psychologist Steven Pinker, and Nobel laureate Sir Harold Croto, James D. Watson, and Steven Weinberg have defended Dawkins's stance on religion and praised his work. Others, including Nobel Prize winning theoretical physicist Peter Higgs, astrophysicist Martin Rees, philosopher of science Michael Ruse, literary critic Terry Eagleton, and theologian Alistair McGrath, have criticized Dawkins on various grounds, including the assertion that his work simply serves as an atheist counterpart to religious fundamentalism rather than a productive critique of it, and that he has fundamentally misapprehended the foundations of the theological positions he claims to refute. Rees and Higgs, in particular, have both rejected Dawkins's confrontational stance toward religion as narrow and embarrassing, with Higgs going as far as to equate Dawkins with the religious fundamentalists he criticizes. Atheist philosopher John Gray has denounced Dawkins as an anti-religious missionary, whose assertions are, in no sense novel or original, suggesting that, transfixed in wonderment at the workings of his own mind, Dawkins misses much that is of importance in human beings. Gray has also criticized Dawkins's perceived allegiance to Darwin, stating that if science, for Darwin, was a method of inquiry that enabled him to edge tentatively and humbly toward the truth, for Dawkins, science is an unquestioned view of the world. In response to his critics, Dawkins maintains that theologians are no better than scientists in addressing deep cosmological questions and that he is not a fundamentalist, as he is willing to change his mind in the face of new evidence. Topic. Criticism of creationism Dawkins is a prominent critic of creationism, a religious belief that humanity, life, and the universe were created by a deity without recourse to evolution. He has described the young earth creationist view that the earth is only a few thousand years old as a preposterous, mind-shrinking falsehood. His 1986 book, The Blind Watchmaker, contains a sustained critique of the argument from design, an important creationist argument. In the book, Dawkins argues against the watchmaker analogy made famous by the 18th-century English theologian William Paley via his book Natural Theology, in which Paley argues that just as a watch is too complicated and too functional to have sprung into existence merely by accident, so too must all living things—with their far greater complexity—be purposefully designed. Dawkins shares the view generally held by scientists that natural selection is sufficient to explain the apparent functionality and non-random complexity of the biological world, and can be said to play the role of watchmaker in nature, albeit as an automatic, unguided by any designer, non-intelligent, blind watchmaker. In 1986, Dawkins and biologist John Maynard Smith participated in an Oxford Union debate against A. E. Wilder Smith a young earth creationist and Edgar Andrews president of the Biblical Creation Society. In general, however, Dawkins has followed the advice of his late colleague Stephen J. Gould and refused to participate in formal debates with creationists because what they seek is the oxygen of respectability, and doing so would give them this oxygen by the mere act of engaging with them at all. He suggests that creationists don't mind being beaten in an argument. What matters is that we give them recognition by bothering to argue with them in public. In a December 2004 interview with American journalist Bill Moyers, Dawkins said that, among the things that science does know, evolution is about as certain as anything we know. When Moyers questioned him on the use of the word theory, Dawkins stated that, Evolution has been observed. It's just that it hasn't been observed while it's happening. 
He added that, "...it is rather like a detective coming on a murder after the scene the detective hasn't actually seen the murder take place, of course. But what you do see is a massive clue huge quantities of circumstantial evidence. It might as well be spelled out in words of English." Dawkins has opposed the inclusion of intelligent design in science education, describing it as, "...not a scientific argument at all, but a religious one." He has been referred to in the media as, "...Darwin's Rottweiler." A reference to English biologist T. H. Huxley, who was known as Darwin's Bulldog for his advocacy of Charles Darwin's evolutionary ideas. He has been a strong critic of the British organisation Truth in Science, which promotes the teaching of creationism in state schools, and whose work Dawkins has described as an educational scandal. He plans to subsidise schools through the Richard Dawkins Foundation for Reason and Science with the delivery of books, DVDs, and pamphlets that counteract their work. Topic. Political views Dawkins is an outspoken atheist and a supporter of various atheist, secular, and humanistic organizations, including Humanists UK and the Brights Movement. Dawkins suggests that atheists should be proud, not apologetic, stressing that atheism is evidence of a healthy, independent mind. He hopes that the more atheists identify themselves, the more the public will become aware of just how many people are non-believers, thereby reducing the negative opinion of atheism among the religious majority. Inspired by the gay rights movement, he endorsed the out campaign to encourage atheists worldwide to declare their stance publicly. He supported the UK's first atheist advertising initiative, the Atheist Bus Campaign in 2008, which aimed to raise funds to place atheist advertisements on buses in the London area. Dawkins has expressed concern about the growth of human population and about the matter of overpopulation. In The Selfish Gene, he briefly mentions population growth, giving the example of Latin America, whose population, at the time the book was written, was doubling every 40 years. He is critical of Roman Catholic attitudes to family planning and population control, stating that leaders who forbid contraception and express a preference for natural methods of population limitation will get just such a method in the form of starvation, as a supporter of the Great Ape Project, a movement to extend certain moral and legal rights to all great apes. Dawkins contributed the article Gaps in the Mind to the Great Ape Project book edited by Paola Cavallari and Peter Singer. In this essay, he criticizes contemporary society's moral attitudes as being based on a discontinuous, speciesist imperative. Dawkins also regularly comments in newspapers and blogs on contemporary political questions and is a frequent contributor to the online science and culture digest Three Quarks Daily. His opinions include opposition to the 2003 invasion of Iraq, the British nuclear deterrent, the actions of then U.S. President George W. Bush, and the ethics of designer babies. Several such articles were included in A Devil's Chaplain, an anthology of writings about science, religion, and politics. He is also a supporter of Republic's campaign to replace the British monarchy with a democratically elected president. Dawkins has described himself as a Labour voter in the 1970s and voter for the Liberal Democrats since the party's creation. In 2009, he spoke at the party's conference in opposition to blasphemy laws, alternative medicine, and faith schools. In the UK general election of 2010, Dawkins officially endorsed the Liberal Democrats, in support of their campaign for electoral reform and for their refusal to pander to faith. In the run-up to the 2017 general election, Dawkins once again endorsed the Liberal Democrats and urged voters to join the party. In 1998, Dawkins expressed his appreciation for two books connected with the Sokol Affair, Higher Superstition, The Academic Left and Its Quarrels with Science by Paul R. Gross and Norman Levitt and Intellectual Impostures by Sokol and Jean Brickmont. These books are famous for their criticism of postmodernism in U.S. universities namely in the departments of literary studies, anthropology, and other cultural studies. Dawkins has voiced his support for the campaign for the establishment of a United Nations Parliamentary Assembly, an organization that campaigns for democratic reform in the United Nations, and the creation of a more accountable international political system. Dawkins identifies as a feminist. Dawkins has said that feminism is enormously important and a political movement that deserves to be supported. Other fields 
In his role as Professor for Public Understanding of Science, Dawkins has been a critic of pseudoscience and alternative medicine. His 1998 book Unweaving the Rainbow considers John Keats's accusation that by explaining the rainbow, Isaac Newton diminished its beauty. Dawkins argues for the opposite conclusion. He suggests that deep space, the billions of years of life's evolution, and the microscopic workings of biology and heredity contain more beauty and wonder than do myths and pseudoscience. For John Diamond's posthumously published Snake Oil, a book devoted to debunking alternative medicine, Dawkins wrote a foreword in which he asserts that alternative medicine is harmful, if only because it distracts patients from more successful conventional treatments and gives people false hopes. Dawkins states that there is no alternative medicine. There is only medicine that works and medicine that doesn't work." In his 2007 Channel 4 TV film The Enemies of Reason, Dawkins concluded that Britain is gripped by "...an epidemic of superstitious thinking." Continuing a long-standing partnership with Channel 4, Dawkins participated in a five-part television series, Genius of Britain, along with fellow scientists Stephen Hawking, James Dyson, Paul Nurse, and Jim Al-Khalili. The series was first broadcast in June 2010, and focuses on major, British, scientific achievements throughout history. In 2014, he joined the global awareness movement Asteroid Day as a 100x signatory. Dawkins worked alongside Welsh musician Jace Lewis, contributing a recorded spoken word for the track Exhale from his 1998 book Unweaving the Rainbow to the Welshman's third full length album, Million. Topic. Awards and recognition Dawkins was awarded a Doctor of Science degree by the University of Oxford in 1989. He holds honorary doctorates in science from the University of Huddersfield, University of Westminster, Durham University, the University of Hull, the University of Antwerp, the University of Oslo, the University of Aberdeen, Open University, the Vrije Universiteit at Brussels, and the University of Valencia. He also holds honorary doctorates of letters from the University of St Andrews and the Australian National University Honlet, 1996, and was elected Fellow of the Royal Society of Literature in 1997 and a Fellow of the Royal Society FRS in 2001. He is one of the patrons of the Oxford University Scientific Society. In 1987, Dawkins received a Royal Society of Literature Award and a Los Angeles Times Literary Prize for his book The Blind Watchmaker. In the same year, he received a Cy. Tech Prize for Best Television Documentary Science Program of the Year for his work on the BBC's Horizon episode The Blind Watchmaker. His other awards include the Zoological Society of London's Silver Medal 1989, the Finlay Innovation Award 1990, the Michael Faraday Award 1990, the Nakayama Prize 1994, the American Humanist Association's Humanist of the Year Award 1996, the Fifth International Cosmos Prize 1997, the Kistler Prize 2001. The Medal of the Presidency of the Italian Republic 2001. The 2001 and 2012 Emperor Has No Clothes Award from the Freedom From Religion Foundation, the Bicentennial Kelvin Medal of the Royal Philosophical Society of Glasgow 2002, and the Nirenberg Prize for Science in the Public Interest 2009. He was awarded the Deschener Award, named after German anti-clerical author Karlheinz Deschener. The Committee for Skeptical Inquiry CSICOP has awarded Dawkins their highest award in Praise of Reason 1992. Dawkins Top Prospect Magazine's 2004 list of the top 100 public British intellectuals, as decided by the readers, receiving twice as many votes as the runner-up. He was shortlisted as a candidate in their 2008 follow-up poll. In a poll held by Prospect in 2013, Dawkins was voted the world's top thinker based on 65 names chosen by a largely US and UK based expert panel. In 2005, the Hamburg based Alfred Topfer Foundation awarded him its Shakespeare Prize in recognition of his concise and accessible presentation of scientific knowledge. He won the Lewis Thomas Prize for writing about science for 2006, as well as the Galaxy British Book Awards as Author of the Year Award for 2007. 
In the same year, he was listed by Time magazine as one of the 100 most influential people in the world in 2007, and was ranked 20th in the Daily Telegraph's 2007 list of 100 greatest living geniuses. Since 2003, the Atheist Alliance International has awarded a prize during its annual conference, honoring an outstanding atheist whose work has done the most to raise public awareness of atheism during that year. It is known as the Richard Dawkins Award, in honor of Dawkins's own efforts. In February 2010, Dawkins was named to the Freedom from Religion Foundation's Honorary Board of Distinguished Achievers. In 2012, ichthyologists in Sri Lanka honored Dawkins by creating Dakincha as a new genus name. Members of this genus were formerly members of the genus Pushus. Explaining the reasoning behind the genus name, lead researcher Rohan Pethiyagoda was quoted as stating, Richard Dawkins has, through his writings, helped us understand that the universe is far more beautiful and awe-inspiring than any religion has imagined. We hope that Dakincha will serve as a reminder of the elegance and simplicity of evolution, the only rational explanation there is for the unimaginable diversity of life on Earth. Topic personal life Dawkins has been married three times, and has one daughter. On 19 August 1967, Dawkins married fellow ethologist Marion Stamp in the Protestant Church in Anstown, County Waterford, Ireland. They divorced in 1984. On the 1st of June 1984, he married Eve Barham, the 19th of August 1951 to the 28th of February 1999 in Oxford. They had a daughter, Juliet Emma Dawkins, born 1984, Oxford. Dawkins and Barham divorced. In 1992, he married actress Lala Ward in Kensington and Chelsea, London. Dawkins met her through their mutual friend Douglas Adams, who had worked with her on the BBC's Doctor Who. Dawkins and Ward separated in 2016 and they later described the separation as entirely amicable. On 6 February 2016, Dawkins suffered a minor hemorrhagic stroke while at home. Dawkins reported later that same year that he had almost completely recovered. Topic media topic Selected publications The Selfish Gene. Oxford, Oxford University Press, 1976. ISBN 978-0-19-286092-7. The Extended Phenotype. Oxford, Oxford University Press. 1982. ISBN 978-0-19-288051-2. The Blind Watchmaker. New York, W. W. Norton & Company, 1986. ISBN 978-0-393-31570-7. River Out of Eden. New York, Basic Books, 1995. ISBN 978-0-465-06990-3. Book text Climbing Mount Improbable. New York, W. W. Norton & Company, 1996. ISBN 978-0-393-31682-7. Unweaving the Rainbow. Boston, Houghton Mifflin, 1998. ISBN 978-0-618-05673-6. A Devil's Chaplain. Weidenfeld and Nicholson, United Kingdom and Commonwealth, Houghton Mifflin, United States, 2003. ISBN 9780753817506. The Ancestor's Tale. Boston, Houghton Mifflin, 2004. ISBN 9780618005833. The God Delusion. Bantam Press, United Kingdom, Houghton Mifflin, United States, 2006. ISBN 9780618680009. The Greatest Show on Earth: The Evidence for Evolution. Transworld, United Kingdom and Commonwealth, Free Press, United States, 2009. ISBN 9780593061732. The Magic of Reality: How We Know What's Really True. Bantam Press, United Kingdom, Free Press, United States, 2011. ISBN 978-1-4391-9281-8. OCLC 709673132. An Appetite for Wonder, The Making of a Scientist. Bantam Press, United Kingdom and United States, 2013. ISBN 978-0-06228715-1. Brief Candle in the Dark, My Life in Science. Bantam Press, United Kingdom and United States, 2015. ISBN 978-0062288431. Science in the Soul, Selected Writings of a Passionate Rationalist. 
Random House, 2017. ISBN 978-1-4735-4166-5. Topic documentary films Nice Guys Finish First 1986, The Blind Watchmaker 1987, Growing Up in the Universe 1991, Break the Science Barrier 1996, The Atheism Tapes 2004, The Big Question 2005, Part 3 of the TV series, titled Why Are We Here? The Root of All Evil, 2006. The Enemies of Reason, 2007. The Genius of Charles Darwin, 2008. The Purpose of Purpose, 2009. Lecture Tour Among American Universities, Faith School Menace, 2010. Beautiful Minds, April 2012. BBC Four Documentary Sex, Death and the Meaning of Life, 2012. The Unbelievers, 2013. Topic Other appearances Dawkins has made many television appearances on news shows providing his political opinions and especially his views as an atheist. He has been interviewed on the radio, often as part of his book tours. He has debated many religious figures. He has made many university speaking appearances, again often in coordination with his book tours. As of 2016, he has over 60 credits in the Internet Movie Database where he appeared as himself. Expelled, No Intelligence Allowed 2008 as himself, presented as a leading scientific opponent of intelligent design in a film that contends that the mainstream science establishment suppresses academics who believe they see evidence of intelligent design in nature and who criticize evidence supporting Darwinian evolution Doctor Who, The Stolen Earth 2008 as himself The Simpsons, Black Eyed, Please 2013 appears in Ned Flanders' Dream of Hell, provided voice as a demon version of himself Endless Forms Most Beautiful 2015 by Nightwish, Finnish symphonic metal band Nightwish had Dawkins as a guest star on the album. He provides narration on two tracks, Shudder Before the Beautiful, in which he opens the album with one of his own quotes, and The Greatest Show on Earth, inspired by and named after his book The Greatest Show on Earth, The Evidence for Evolution, and in which he quotes on the origin of species by Charles Darwin. He subsequently performed his parts Live with Nightwish on 19 December 2015 at the Wembley Arena in London. The concert was later released as a part of a live album, DVD titled Vehicle of Spirit. Topic notes topic References topic Cited texts Dawkins, Richard 1989. The Selfish Gene 2nd ed. United Kingdom, Oxford University Press. ISBN 978-0-19-286092-7. Dawkins, Richard. 2006. The God Delusion. Transworld Publishers. ISBN 978-0-593-05548-9. Dawkins, Richard. 2003. A Devil's Chaplain. Weidenfeld and Nicholson, United Kingdom and Commonwealth, Houghton Mifflin, United States. ISBN 978-0753817506. Dawkins, Richard. 2015. Brief Candle in the Dark, My Life in Science. Bantam Press. ISBN 978-0-59307-256-1. Graffin, Allen, Ridley, Mark 2006. Richard Dawkins, How a Scientist Changed the Way We Think. New York, New York, Oxford University Press. ISBN 978 0 Topic external links Official website, The Richard Dawkins Foundation for Reason and Science Richard Dawkins on IMDb Richard Dawkins at Ted Richard Dawkins on Charlie Rose Appearances on C-SPAN Richard Dawkins Collected News and Commentary. The Guardian. Richard Dawkins, Lasted News at The Independent Richard Dawkins at The New York Times Richard Dawkins at Big Think.